Hello everyone, we are back for our new Belgian test. This is all we're gonna do today. This will be the third test for Asheville and then we're, well, we're gonna do more of it. This is the, only, the last test for Asheville area. Once it lets us enable full self-drive in here, we'll enable it. There seems to be a lot more traffic today. Or maybe we're just getting in traffic or maybe it's that stoplight um, from two videos ago. We had a uh, we had a um, stoplight that was bad, not working correctly. Mine was a four-way stop with a red, blinking red, but the other direction was a blinking yellow, and so there were cars like it looked like I was running the light to get through, and so uh, yeah, and it looked like I was running the light. And they didn't know what was going and the other guy just kind of flew through the yellow light with no caution at all um, and yeah if you want to see um, hit, like I mean I was very close to getting in a wreck I mean obviously I jammed on the brake um, the car I don't know if the car was doing anything or not um, I feel like I definitely had to Otis Street I feel like I definitely had um, the bet quicker and more accurate re reaction time uh, than the car in that situation. It just wasn't paying attention. That could have been a limitation of the B pillar. We'll be able to tell with the wide angle camera once I edit these videos. Let's make sure it's not going to pass this road here or turn in front of cars. I don't know why it turned the wheel this way. Hold it, sometimes when it does stuff like this, it'll just like jerk the wheel. I mean, considering this is an unprotected left and it's waiting for all this traffic, previous updates just would not do this. Like, it would, it would not do that at all. And so now, that's fabulous. It did that great. Uh, I'm okay. Let me rephrase that. It did it great for a pre compared to previous updates. Compared to what a human would do, definitely could have done it more smoothly. That being said, we got a computer driving a car. That's that's pretty awesome. Cameras, like people said, it was impossible. <laughs> right. I mean, we got two two cameras in our eyes up here, and they got a computer for a brain. Our brain is a computer, if you will. So yeah. Now we got ourselves a blind turn here. It's like the probably no cars coming from the no the car coming from the right, car coming from the left. Okay. And that's a good example of a limited B pillar camera. It probably would have stopped, but it would have freaked out that car for sure. And this is vehicle departing lane. No, actually, we're in the correct lane. Um, yeah, exactly. And it wants to go around here. Let's go ahead and take a snapshot of that. In 500 feet, turn right onto Cox Avenue. Now it's the same, so it really seems like it's the same spots over and over and over again that are causing these issues. It, it's, it's that spot right there, I'm trying to get in the correct lane and the bike lane's uh, messing it up. It's, um, it seems to be the lane over where the downtown Nashville tests, it doesn't get in the correct lane every single time. Uh, like it does all this stuff great. A few differences, like this gate seems to be a little bit, like that was pretty close to that gate, to be honest. Um, that gate really should be pulled in a little bit more than it is. Now all this stuff, it seems to make, like it's messed up this turn a couple times, but then the last couple times, it's um, done it great. Even with cars around and everything else, it kind of threaded the needle perfectly. So we're doing a full stop here. And we 
gonna turn the wheel. Did fine. Again, a little bit, little bit of hesitancy because it, it braked right there. And now your destination is on the right. Okay, we are clear to go. Now turn right to stay on Church Street. Seems really hesitant this time. Wow, that was like the first time it really ever failed that test. Everyone, the, the first time ever. Um, the reason why I failed it because it got too close to the pillar. Like it didn't see that pillar as well as it did on previous updates. And we'll compare that in the future. We'll kind of compare. It's it couldn't get around this car properly, and now we have this car oncoming. Your destination will be on the right. Okay. I don't know when that's going to happen. That seems like it's going to be very critical for city type environments to be able to like pull into a parking spot real quick and then get back out because there's a really tight street or something like that. Seems like that's going to be very necessary to be able to complete that properly. So that was not a disengagement. We are trying to get up this road here. Wow, I actually did that turn really well. I think it was hesitant because of that car right there. So they have finally gotten rid of the cones in the middle of the street here. So it definitely seems to help uh, on this section right here. It is having much less of an issue going down this particular section section. Okay, still a little bit close to the curb right there, but it definitely went around it. This is definitely doing better today than it did last weekend when we did 10.6 uh, uh, whether or not it, they've made any changes at all who honestly who knows I, I have to say that the phantom braking definitely seems to be less I I don't want to jinx it it's not I knock on some wood over here but um, it's still there for sure but it seems to be less and I wish it just wouldn't stop around the belts like I'm gonna hold the accelerator right now. It's, it's like it should slow down like this. In 500 feet, your destination will be on the left. If it did that without me having to do the accelerator, it would have been amazing. I'm hoping next update, X update. Come on, Elon. We have two updates still. We haven't got waypoints. I really need waypoints to make this easier. It's kind of funny how the normal... Wow. Perfect. Holy crap, did that great. That's how it needs to do all around the belts. Coast right in. Boom. Had a little hesitant for this person here, which is normal. And fine. But this right here, it's slowing down too much. I'm holding the accelerator. And now it's doing it by its... I'm holding the accelerator. And now it's doing it on its own. That was great. Roundabouts are improving again. Let's see if this road, see it can't, it can't see the curb. It never used to have that problem. So now it can't see the curb here for some reason. Again, 
Again, pull to the curb. Both of those disengagements count. It is pulling to the curb. It thinks there's a separate road right here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and press that snapshot. It just cannot tell there's a curb there, which is kind of alarming. Like, from my point of view, like, I have to, like, before it could tell. Like, you can see here, it's being more confident because there's a shadow on the curb. When there's no shadow on the curb, the car thinks it's a continuous road. It doesn't think it's a curb. I'm fortunate that it is like a slope curve, so if it does run into it, it's probably not going to mess up anything too bad. But still, it's probably going to like bottom out the car or scrape something uh, that I don't want it, want, want it to do. Saw all those people right there and freaked out. Yeah, this section right here was has never been this bad. Like the last few updates, something changed and really messed this section up. It used to do it perfectly every time. And then now it's just, it's terrible. It's because it can no longer see that curb and it thinks it's a separate road. And it tries to change lanes over over the curb. And of course the car never uses blinker. So like it might just swing over anytime it wants. That's why it's very important all the time to always have a hand on the wheel. Or at least close by. Okay, that was not a disengagement. I pulled the wheel by accident. Um, but always have a hand nearby. Like, you kind of rest it on it like this, even. Like, I, I usually always grip it so I don't ever get any type of... That's a sweet truck right there. Oh my goodness. That's really cool. Why do you... You're walking on the wrong side of the road, people. Okay. Well. Yeah, they're... Definitely walking on the wrong side of the road. Now that then my car got on the opposite side of the road to pass them, but then you never got back over. It just stayed in the left, wrong side of the road. So that's kind of an edge case, if you will. Uh, you don't see that too often. Uh, at least, I mean, yeah, I, I, I say that's a pretty rare situation, at, least, at minimum. motorcycle messes the car up almost every time now see how it does around this corner it always seems to stay too far left it is staying appropriately to the right currently pressing the accelerator it was gonna break come to a complete stop there again it just needs to slow down sooner and be smooth into that versus trying to break last minute because it thinks oh there might be something around this corner I should break or something at least I'm trying to determine how the car's car's logic is working that that's uh, uh, right turn well and it's a slow sooner for here. It needs to wait for this red car. It did. See if it can get between the medians. Very good, very good. Okay, everyone. That's going to be the end of our new Belgian test. No train this time. Uh, I'm glad we did get the train, though, last time. That was a um, very good test. Destination is on Very good test uh, of how we respond to a train, an edge case. You don't see a train very often, at least not around here you don't. Um, and so it's glad we got that opportunity to get that on video. If you have any questions for me, put them down below in the comments. Uh, if you found this video interesting, I really would appreciate if you give me a like and a subscribe. 
if you have um, any further comments, I would like to see them below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.